Hey, I'm Mark Clem, your host for Meet the Members of the National Ski Patrol, and as we'd like to say, all season long. Hey, folks, we had, a, again, we had a pretty rough season. Um, came to a, uh, the door kind of slammed shut, um, I don't know, 12 or 13 weeks ago, back in March. And uh, we just kind of shut the doors and walked away. And uh, since then, we've been, Meet the Members of the National Ski Patrol has been producing um, special episodes, and this is going to be special. Um, COVID-19 episode number 10. And in these episodes, we talk to um, you know, folks on the front lines. We talk to patrollers who are just basically volunteering and, and helping out and doing what they can. We've talked to doctors and nurses and um, just everybody out there, a whole gamut of folks who are doing what they can. And um, just like patrollers, we, it's very difficult for a patroller to just walk away and throw up his arms and quit. It's we can always do the job and we're always looking for something to make it better. And um, um, we're just kind of doers out there. Now, we've also talked to um, some folks um, within the National Ski Patrol and talking about how we're going to reopen, much like um, all the businesses around the country who've got reopening plans in the states and the counties and what they're going to do to kind of get back to so-called normal. The National Ski Patrol is coming up with their plan um, so they feel like um, they can make a safe situation, a safe environment for not only the skiers, our public skiers out there, but for members of the National Ski Patrol to feel safe and okay when we come back in the fall and the winter to do our job as members of the National Ski Patrol. Um, with that said, we'd like to welcome um, Sharon Friedel to the show. I've known Sharon for a long time in the um, eastern Pennsylvania region, and she's a patroller at the unbelievable Blue Mountain. And Sharon, how's Whitehall, Pennsylvania treating you these days? Whitehall, Pennsylvania is pretty good. It's nice weather outside. It's sunny. Uh, summer has arrived, and we're doing really good here. Any more snow patches on the mountain up there? We can kind of get our skis wet? Unfortunately not. Um, everyone's in uh, summer mode up there, getting the uh, the mountain biking and all the summer activities ready to open. You know, you got to move on sometime. So um, I guess we'll let it that. Um, you know, Sharon, again, has been a, is a patrol at Blue Mountain, um, but she's also um, just either finishing up or heading into her second year as the director of the Eastern Pennsylvania region. And um, she took over for, um, uh, who do we take over for last year? I forget. Bob Bernardos. Bob Bernardos, yes. Bob Bernardos, she did a, a great job. And um, and then now Sharon's going to step in and, and continue the, the success and take us to another level. But today, Sharon is a member of what we call the Cooped Up Task Force. The Cooped Up Task Force is a team of 16 patrollers from all around the Eastern Division. And it's headed by the Eastern Division Director, Cal Goldsmith. And their job is to try to figure out how to beat this COVID-19 situation in terms of, of the patrollers and the general members so we can open up and get back to, if we can say this with a straight face, business as normal, whatever that is. So Sharon, um, you've had a few meetings with the task force and um, I guess they've been all virtual. Um, just. Tell us about what's the latest and greatest going on with the Cooped Up Task Force and uh, how are you going to fix it for us? Yes, yeah, so uh, we are meeting weekly and we're trying to put together a few documents. Uh, the, the first and uh, I think most important one is uh, putting a document together for some guidelines for our patrollers out there so that they can feel safe amid COVID-19 uh, so that they can treat their, their patients, their customers, um, and be protected at the same time. So it's, uh, it's going to be a, a, a whole list of um, what to do as far as um, enhanced PPE, um, wearing masks, different screening questions for the patients, and, and what to do with them if you do suspect COVID-19. So we're hoping to have a, a final document put together by the end of the week. We've been going back and forth um, presenting it to national so that we can kind of get their approval as well. And then from there, we'll pass it on uh, to the patrollers and everybody can, you know, kind of function at a more comfortable level amidst COVID-19. Well, when I talked to Cal 
Goldsmith about 10 days ago. Um, you know, the idea, I, we just wanted to find out, um, like, what's going on? It seems like, you know, everything was shut down and patrollers are out there going, are we going to open next year? Are we going to patrol? What's it going to be like? And I'd really like to commend your group and Cal for reading it reiterating out there that we are working diligently we are going to make this thing work and everybody's going to come back and um and be safe with you know a little risk but not not a scary thing and it's going to be it's going to be okay um i guess 10 days later just talk about um your plan and in the in the uh, the task force plan is to take what you're dealing with with the national office and the division, and how is that filtering down to, you know, more locally, like in the region, and into down to the mountains, the individual patrollers? How do you get your message across? So what we're going to do initially, um, and not just with the, the guidelines for the PPE, but also how we're going to go about with our training, all our different programs and, and our fall refreshers. And so uh, first, what we'd like to do is get this document out to all the region directors, and from there on down to the patrol directors and sort of back it up as well with an email to each individual patroller so that everybody gets the word on on these guidelines and how they can better prepare themselves to take care of the, the customers. Now, I would like to say I did get an email, I think, from you a few days ago. And when I saw Sharon Friday, I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't do it. Um, but when I opened up, it was great. I mean, I really appreciate, you know, you're you're letting, you're, you're getting the information out there. I mean, I know it's in little bits and pieces right now, but it seems like it's, it's going to work. And I'm glad that you guys are take giving it a more personal touch instead of just a blast out there and Hey, everybody who's concerned, here we go. Um, talk about the refreshers a little bit. Now there was, um, Cal talked about the possibility of just a hybrid, just something online and, um, and not anything hands on. And how do you think, um, now I know that we can, we can move on and get a little bit of hands on as we progress into this thing, but some people need more than others because of their backgrounds and, and what they do in real life and others do this for three months and call it quits till, and you know, they've got to dust off their patrol pack in October and, and get it going again. Just talk about how that is discussed with the, at the division level. So we, we don't have a final decision yet, um, but they're, they're kind of leaning towards, yes, doing more of the online, the virtual learning, uh, the hybrid, getting that part of it out of the way. There's, there's talk of maybe tabling the core skills for cycle A, moving that to cycle B for next year. Um, th there's several different ways that this can pan out. A lot of it can be done through virtual learning. We can do local, just like even at the patrol level, get the instructors together and do some hands-on skills training in smaller groups. The, the big thing is right now with government directives, we have to follow what each, each county government is dictating to us as well. So depending on what size groups you can meet in, you know, we have some refreshers in, even in the Eastern PA region, upwards of 150, 175 attendees. Right. And that would be very difficult to do with social distancing. So these are all those considerations that we're taking a look at and to see how we can best update the members. Um, there's probably going to be incorporated some, whether it's done virtually or in small groups in person, um, more enhanced training on donning and doffing of PPE, not just gloves, but how to put on masks, how to put on N95s, how to put on gowns, take them off the right way. Uh, so we're looking at all those different considerations in with this, this uh, task force. Now, not to pile on or nothing, but amongst figuring out how we're going to get open and, and all that, you're also going to have to think about rolling out and getting people up to speed on the brand new sixth edition of the Outdoor Emergency Care Book, which if you non patrollers out there, it's kind of our Bible. It's our training materials that we use, and that rolled out. So you can't rely on what everybody knew before because there's going to be some new twists and wrinkles in that um, as well. Right. The, the sixth edition roll out and it's looking like that's going to be um, more of a virtual platform as well. Mm -hmm. National is actually putting something on their learning management system 
similar to how we do our hybrid refreshers. Uh, so that's coming down the line. There are some differences between the fifth and sixth edition, some, some really good changes, um, but nothing too drastic that it can't be done virtually. So we should be able to, to pass that down along to our patrollers as well. Now, for all you people out there wondering, um, the, the edition, the sixth edition went to print right at the beginning of the COVID situation. So there might not be a whole bunch of the COVID information in there. There is some, Ed McNamara told me there is some that they were able to squeeze in. So it's going to be some um, other information that we, that we just pass on through the division word of mouth and the training and the virtual training and all that. And, um, you know, that's, that's unfortunate that it had to come out that way. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't stop the press for something like that. And they did meet their deadline. It was, uh, you know, published by their goal of May 11th. Uh, it, it's a great book. I don't know if you've seen it yet. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun rolling it out, uh, just like we did the the fifth edition. We're going right. to get everybody up to speed on it, and that way uh, patrols can start their new classes for their candidates um, as of July 1st. They'll be able to use right. the new book. And uh, and in the fall, we'll you know we're going to work somehow, some way to get mm -hmm. our patrollers updated, so they won't be slacking on it. Some you know patrollers are re resilient people. And Cal had the um, a pretty interesting comment for the bike patrols that are getting out there now. And we haven't had a plan out there. And he goes, you know what? Patrollers are patrollers. If we don't have a plan, they'll figure it out. And they're the safest and best thing we can do. So um, I yeah. guess that's a, a credit to all of us. Yeah, that, that's so true. I mean, so many patr uh, patrols, mountain bike patrols have already started. And right. a lot of those uh, bike patrols have already started to put together some of their protocols and guidelines. And we're working with them too and incorporating that into our document so that, uh, you know, we've got all the information available that we can to pass on down to everyone. Now talking to Cal um, 10 days ago or so, and he brought up something that I really never thought about. He thought about, um, or he talked about um, the situation where, or he was a little nervous or hesitant thinking, you know, there could be a chunk of patrollers, that may say, um, you know, I don't really feel comfortable. I don't know if it's safe enough um, to patrol this year. And um, the other thing about like dues, I mean, 41 million people out of a job and $90 dues, I mean, that might hurt. It might sting a little bit. Is there any thought, has there any thought out there about how we ease the tension and um, if there is a financial problem? So part of the task force, we're, we're kind of split into four different groups. One of the groups is looking at the financial aspects of uh, patrolling and also looking, uh, you know, membership as a whole. Like if someone is concerned, if they're in that high risk category, you know, what, what do they do? And to get the word out to that, you know, we do have the alumni category and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with someone going alumni for a year, staying in tune with the ski patrol. You know, maybe they just need a break for a year, but yet still, you know, be a valued member of the ski patrol and, and you know, stay on as an alumni member and then flip back to active and get in the following year. Right. So we're, we're, we're looking at all of those, all of those situations. I mean, again, I got to tip my hat to you guys because there's so many what ifs out there. And I told Cal I was going to get his shirt that says, I'm sick of what if, because you can what if yourself to death. So I guess there comes a point where you just got to move on. And whatever happens, we kind of either fix it on the fly or, or something like that. Well, Mark, you said it before. The ski patrollers are a resilient group, and and we're doing we're doing ski patrol because we love doing it. Mm -hmm. And so we're go we're going to get through this. We're going to keep moving forward, and it's going to change on the way. I, the document that we started with already changed several times, and so right. it's kind of going to be. A, a, a live breathing document that's going to change as, as COVID-19 evolves as well. Right. Again, I'm Mark, I'm your host for Meet the Members of the National Ski Patrol, and this is special COVID-19 edition number 10. And we'd like to thank um, part of our, our sponsors out there. One is Video Action Plan. Um, Matt Golicki over there um, showed me how to get on Zoom, figured it out, got me set up in the studio here. And so uh, they're always helping us out. And Matt, Matt is a uh, ski patroller at Whitetail in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And um, 
So again, thanks to Video Action Plan out there as one of our sponsors of Meet the Member of the National Ski Patrol. Now, Sharon, you brought up an interesting part is that we are resilient and we're going to make it. Um, how do you feel coming into this thing? Is there any hesitancy out there on your part? Or do you think, you know, I just put my boots on and make it happen? Well, I can't speak for everyone, but personally, I, I am a nurse by profession. I've been working right in the middle of COVID-19 these past couple months. So for me anymore, you know, it's, it's just put on my PPE, um, do what I'm instructed to do to protect myself, to protect the patients. And if you, if you can get past that, you can really, you can, you can accomplish anything. So and um, I, I know there is some, um, I know the EMTs that I talked to and the paramedics I talked to, and I talked to um, Steve Barber, who's the patrol director in the Southern Division down at Wintergreen, and um, they talk about the initial assessment when, they're, when you come up on a patient, and the way the EMTs and paramedics are doing now on the street is it's kind of a social distancing social distancing initial assessment in other words they're standing six or seven feet away and he tells me sometimes the door's still closed on the house and he's talking to the patient and it's not um a 10 second scene size up and scene safety and jumping in um that's big that's a different deal than how patrollers normally perform you know you you look at the scene for a few seconds it's okay what what hurts my leg go right for the leg that's a big change if we're gonna if we're gonna extend the time and do that a little different. Yeah, it's we're looking at pretty much the same type of approach, and a lot of that is going to be coming out um, in some of these guidelines. The first thing you want to establish, sure, is from six feet away, do those screening questions. It has the if the, does the patient have any signs or symptoms of COVID? any of those symptoms that everybody's heard about in the news, right. have they been in close contact with someone that was tested positive for COVID? And if they're gonna answer yes to any of that, absolutely make sure that both parties are masked up and then and then do your approach and take care of the patient. Now, have, so you, guys, couple, have you guys had to interact or been able to interact with the National Scare Association, um, who all those members are, you know, um, managers and owners of the ski resorts and things like that and how they're looking at the situation as well so nsaa is also uh, looking at the COVID situation they have uh, some documents that they put forth as well to the ski areas and we're kind of working in conjunction with that too um you know just making sure that the ski areas are in tune to the social distancing and and what what procedures that they want to put in place. It's going to affect everything from, you know, waiting in the lift line to riding the chairs, uh, you know, the, the cafeterias, uh, all operations. Mm -hmm. So it, it's looking at everything as a whole, not just what the patrollers are doing, but what the whole resort is doing. Uh, your point, exactly. I mean, I think um, a lot of us watched online how Arapaho Basin did it a few weeks ago you know, how they were able, you know, they allowed 600 folks and it was a, it was, it was a reservation and how it, it was very interesting how they got those people on the mountain. And it, it's very different than what we're used to, you know, booting up in the car and walking up one at a time on the lift. And it would not surprise me if, if most of the mountains follow suit similarly to that situation, even patrollers we may not be able to go into our locker rooms. We may have to get dressed in our car area and get outside and all that. And it's just, it's, it's going to be different. It is going to be different. And, but when you think of our patrols too, you know, we run the gambit of very small, tiny patrol rooms to right. large facilities. So everybody's going to have to adapt to what their own environment is. And like I said, we're patrollers. We are going to get through this. Okay, folks, we are in a bit of a, a shutdown, um, but we're not shut down per se. Um, the folks out at the national office, um, they might not be, they may be in the offices now, I'm not sure. But Megan um, Mozinski, our executive director, and um, Beckett Stokes, who's our marketing communications person out there, want to um, give you the news that 
um, they are still working from home. They're still working. So if you have questions and you need some answers or, or a situation fixed, um, call or email. Now, if you call, it won't get answered right away. It might take a few more seconds later, but they are diligently um, responding to emails and, and making, giving you the comfort to know that the national office is working and is being productive. And uh, for those candidates out there, or those want to be ski patrollers out there to want to be a candidate, hey, we're still looking for you. We still want you on board. Now, I know you probably won't be able to call your mountain because probably no one's there. So if you're interested in becoming a patroller and you don't know the next step, all you have to do is log on to www.nsp.org. And the folks out in Lakewood, Colorado will steer you in the right direction and help get started because, hey, folks, we need you out there. We want you, especially if you wanted to have that desire to, to take your skiing to another level. And I guess in closing, Sharon, um, this is kind of a loaded question. Um, how hard is your job now? How hard is your job? Because your job has changed from last year to this year, guaranteed. It, it has changed, but the good thing is that there's so many people to rely on for support. You know, just getting together with this task force from the Eastern Division, you don't have to do anything alone. So it's a matter of taking that information and passing it on down, you know, like the email that I, that I sent to everybody. Um, the information is coming, but if anybody has a question, just ask. Um, email has always been there, you know, right. even outside of COVID. Uh, we're doing a lot more virtual meetings, but the communication is still and always will be there. So uh, I still find it fun. You know, it can be stressful at times, but it's still a ton of fun. Well, I always used to say when I was the patrol director at Whitetail that um, because the majority of our patrollers are volunteers is, you know, it's got to be fun. That's the only way I can pay you. I can only pay you in fun. So if it stops to be fun, um, come talk to me and tell me how we can make it fun again. And I'm sure that's part of your situation as well is, hey, guys, we're still going to ski and we're still going to have fun and we're still going to tell funny stories when we're riding up the lifts and all that. I agree. You got to gotta make it fun. Keep it fun. If you're not having fun, come see me. We'll make it fun. That's it. Throw a snowball at you or something like that. <laughs> hey, again, we'd like to thank um, Sharon for spending your time. I know she had a rough day at work today because it's never easy in these times. Um, but, and thank you again for being a nurse and doing your part on the other side. And um, I know what that's like. I'm married to a nurse and I know what she goes through. So it's not fun, but you're doing an unbelievable job out there. Again, I'm Mark Clem, your host for Meet the Members of the National Ski Patrol, special COVID-19 episode number 10. I can't give you a ride in the bandwagon, folks. It's shut down, social distancing, quarantine, and all that. But it's going to snow. And one day, it'll be juiced back up, and there's always a seat, because I'm coming to a mountain near you. And Sharon, I'll be at Blue Mountain. My son's not racing up there anymore, but I'll come ski with you. We'll have fun. How about that? You better. You better. I better. <laughs> See you folks down the road again. I'm Mark Clem, your host for Meet the Members of the National Ski Patrol.